Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about another one of the OWASP top 10 security risks out there in the world today. Uh, and this one is the number seven risk on the list. Uh, the list just came out in 2017, late 2017, so it's the latest and greatest. Um, and this security risk is uh, titled cross-site scripting, or sometimes it's uh, written as XSS. But anyway, cross-site scripting. Uh, it's interesting that this is number seven on the list because the last time the OWASP list came out in uh, 2013, it was the number three uh, security risk out there. And then the, the time before that, the 2010 version, it was the number two. So, uh, so actually it's kind of moved down the list a little bit, which I guess in a sense is good. It means we're getting better at defending cross-site scripting. Uh, but anyway, today we're going to talk about what it is and how you can defend against it. Uh, so ultimately, cross-site scripting is uh, client-side code injection is kind of the, the overarching um, idea of what it is. And essentially, an attacker is trying to steal your stuff, and the attacker is going to send uh, uh, this code that he wants your browser to execute in order to send him all of your secret stuff. Uh, so again, the question is, how does all that work and, and all that? So let's, uh, let's kind of write a, or I'll draw kind of a, uh, an example of how this may work. There's a lot of different types of cross-site scripting, but I'm going to give you a scenario uh, of one that's pretty prevalent and, uh, and one where the attacker is trying to steal your session cookie so that the attacker can then impersonate you to the website that you're going to. And, uh, and then he can do all kinds of stuff, you know, when he has your secrets. So, all right, so the, uh, the cross-site scripting vulnerability uh, really takes three things to, to happen. It takes an attacker, so I'm gonna put the attacker right here. So, attacker, and then it takes a web application. So here's a web app over here, all right? And, then, and, then, and in this case, the web application is vulnerable. And then it also takes a victim. So I'm going to put the victim over here. This is, the, this is the unsuspecting person that is about to get attacked and doesn't even know it. All right, so the attacker, what the attacker is going to do is he's going to find a web application that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, um, and he's going to send it some code. So this web application, let me, uh, let me just kind of draw it out here a little bit. And it consists of several different parts and pieces and all that, but one of the things it has is a database. So I'm going to put a DB right here. It's a database. And then it also has, uh, let's say, some HTML code, all right, which is very common in a web application. All right. And let's say that this, uh, this, this, that this HTML code allows for um, scripts to be run in it, uh, which is one thing that you may not want to do in this case. Uh, but, but anyway, I'll kind of run through a scenario of how this attacker is going to get the victim's secrets and it's going to get it through this vulnerable web application. All right, first thing it's going to do is it's going to send a post to this web application and the post is going to include, I'll put a little uh, script right here, so it's going to have script, um, you know, dot, 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 whatever, and then it's going to, you know, the end of the script, script like that. All right, so what this script is, is trying to do is trying to say, hey, I want to get the cookie from the victim, and I want that victim to send its cookie up to me. And it's going to post that to the database of this web application. And um, so, uh, okay, it's, uh, it does that. So that's where the database could say, hey, I'm not going to allow you to you know, post scripts into the database. And let's say this web application, for example, allows users to comment on stuff or maybe post a question or post a, you know, hey, I really love that picture that you got or whatever it is, um, which is very common today. Uh, but anyway, nonetheless, it's, the attacker's gonna post this script and then the database is gonna have that post, the latest comment or the latest post in that database is gonna be this script. And then where the HTML code comes in is let's say that the HTML code allows for the printing of the latest comment in this database. So as the HTML code runs, if someone were to access this web application and say, hey, I'd love to see the latest comment on that awesome picture that was just posted, then this HTML code that runs the comment from the database allows um, the database comment to be you know, posted kind of thing. Again, a fairly common type uh, scenario. 
All right, well, what the victim is going to do, I'm going to put a couple little boxes around the attacker and the victim. What the victim is going to do is he is going to send a get request, a get, to this web application. And so it's going to be, you know, maybe uh, HTTP um, example.com, whatever. Um, and then, and maybe, maybe uh, also at the end of this, it's going to say, you know, uh, maybe db, db comment. All right, so hopefully you can read all that uh, penmanship there. All right, so example.com slash db comment. And it's going to send that to this web application. And essentially what that is trying to do is it's going to say, hey, I want the latest comment from the database. And then this HTML code is going to, is going to allow to print, um, you know, the DB comment, and it's going to send that back with a, I'm going to say a 200 OK because it's like, hey, you you've requested a, a valid page from me, and when it sends that 200 OK, it's also going to send the contents of this HTML code, and it's going to say, you know, HTML, you know, header one, this is the latest DB comment. And then the next HTML line, it's going to print um, the latest DB comment, which the latest DB comment is the script that this attacker put in the database. And so ultimately, it's going to, on this victim's browser, it's going to have this HTML code that has the script that the attacker sent that he ultimately wanted the victim to, uh, uh, you know, to, to execute in the browser. Um, so once that script uh, executes, so the script is going to be uh, is going to be sent. That script is going to be sent as part of this OK message in the HTML code that now gets uh, executed on the victim's browser. So that script right there is going to be run on the victim's browser. And then what the the one of the questions is, well, what's in the script? Well, the script. Let's say that the script is written to say that it wants the um, it wants the cookie uh, from the victim, and it wants it to be sent up here. So it's going to send a get request, let's say, to the attacker, and it's going to send it to, you know, the website. So it's going to be, you know, http evil.com slash, uh, you know, cookie equals the value of the cookie. So let's say, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, whatever it is. All right. So I know that that's a lot going on here. Again, the attacker sends a, or, or posts a script into the database of this vulnerable web application. The HTML code allows for the user input to be executed whenever it sends it to the unsuspecting victim. Uh, once that script is over here on the victim's browser, the victim's browser then runs and, and executes the HTML code that was sent to it. The HTML code includes that script. Uh, and then that script automatically kicks off a GET request to the attacker's website that he has up here already set up, and it sends uh, along with the GET, you know, to the attacker. It includes the cookie from the victim, from the victim's machine. Uh, a couple of things that you could ask is, well, hey, how does the victim know to even send the GET request over here to this web application that the attacker has infected? Um, that gets into you know social engineering, spear phishing, phishing, whatever it is. You know you guys have seen that all the time. Hey, don't click on any link that you don't trust, or you know any number of ways that the attacker could coerce the victim to click on this link, which would then kick off this entire thing. Another issue is the victim's browser has to be willing to run this script in the HTML that comes over. Uh, if for some reason the victim's browser is like, hey, this HTML code has this, has this script stuff in it that I don't really feel comfortable with, and it doesn't run that, then you're okay. And I think that's part of the reason that cross-site scripting has come down that list so much from, you know, it used to be number two, number three, now it's, now it's number seven. Our browsers have gotten a lot better in, uh, in recent past, um, or in recent history, whatever. Also, the web application, um, uh, so that's one way to defend against this, is make sure you use a modern browser that kind of inherently protects against cross-site scripting. Another one is if you're building this web application, you need, to, you need to separate untrusted data from active browser content. And any kind of user input data needs to be considered untrusted data. 
So you need to separate active browser content from untrusted data. Uh, so that's kind of a very overarching way to approach this whole cross-site scripting um, issue. All right, so you need, to, um, you need to make sure that your web application is secure. And then on the victim side, if you're just a typical user out there and you have no idea all this stuff's kind of going on, make sure you use a browser that's, uh, um, that inherently tries to defend against cross-site scripting. All right, so that's kind of, that's, that's one, one sort of overarching uh, example in a nutshell. Um, there are other ways to defend against this. You can put a web application firewall in front of your web application, and then any kind of uh, potential cross-site scripting attack that comes in from the attacker, that web application firewall is going to kill it before it even gets to your web application. Uh, so there's a number of things you could do. Uh, but nonetheless, cross-site scripting still out there can be very dangerous if it's, uh, if it's allowed to run its course. So, uh, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video. And uh, if you like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, here at Dev Central, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.